Hi, I'm Joni Petrini and welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, today I'd like to talk about Freddie Mercury, who has been in the news. Of course, he has, hasn't been here for a long time, but there, there was a movie that just came out about his life, Bohemian Rhapsody. And this movie really goes into detail about his life, who he was, but I think what you can really see from this movie is his amazing ability to perform, to how talented he was. The music that I grew up with was Bohe Bohemian Rhapsody all the time on the radio at parties. This was a part of growing up. So think about what made him who he was. Well, first of all, let me say this. He is Indian. Both his parents are, are from India. And he loved astrology. I believe the name Mercury came from his connection to the planet Mercury because he and his band members for their logo chose the zodiacal signs, their own zodiacal symbols for their signs. That was in their logo. So you know Mercury was an important planet to Freddie Mercury. And just to give you a little background about the planet Mercury, of course, it deals with communications, it deals with intelligence, how we think. And in mythology, Mercury was the trickster. And it has a lot to do with a sense of humor. Uh, Mercury is sharp, fast, witty, but it's also known as the trickster. And this can be a little bit of the comedian type uh, way that Mercury operates. But Mercury is the perpetual Peter Pan. It deals with youth and it deals with androgyny. So before we go through puberty, we're pretty much androgynous. And this is why Mercury uh, relates to younger people generations. But realize in both Greek and Indian myth, it has connotations to androgyny. In Indian myth, Mercury's wife was Illa, was able to change sexes every other month, became male and female at, at whim every month, every other month that is. Now, in Greek myth, realize that an affair between Mercury, Hermes, and Aphrodite, Venus, they came together and produced a child that was a hermaphrodite. What is a hermaphrodite? A child that has both sexes, both sexual organs. So it's very interesting that Mercury is linked to androgyny. And I think you know where I'm going with this because it is a well-known fact that Freddie Mercury died of AIDS. Um, very promiscuous life, but you know, all in the end, it all came back down to, you know, he had to change, but he went a little wild and crazy at one point. So consequently took his life, but I'd like to show his chart and really look at the references that you can see in a chart that does determine an entertainer, a songwriter, a musician, talent. This is what you're gonna see in a chart. And furthermore, there's something else I want to make note of at the time of his death. But let's put his chart up here. Freddie Mercury, putting it up here, he was born September 5th, 1946 at 6.30 a.m. in Zanzibar, Tanzania. So with that, his ascendant is in Leo and it is 20 degrees of Leo. Let me tell you something about this degree. It is in the nakshatra called Purva Falguni. Purva Falguni is the nakshatra that deals with entertainers. It deals with the need to express themselves. This is bottom line what this nakshatra has to deal with. And so looking at his chart, not only is his ascendant in Leo in Porva Falguni, but also his son. 
His sun is there at 18 degrees of Leo in the nakshatra Purva Falguni. Now Mercury is also there in the first house <laughs> and it is in Leo as well. Not in that nakshatra, but still the sign Leo deals with entertainers. I'll tell you why, because it's relative to Leo is the fifth sign relative to the fifth house, which deals with creativity. And the fifth house deals a lot with performers. It deals with actors, entertainers, on the stage, drama. And let me just tell you this, this was a dramatic act when he, when he performed. He captivated the stage. He lit up like no one i mean it was just an amazing performance so when i think about performers i always look to the third house that's the house of entertainers and also the fifth house why because the fifth house is the third from the third but going to his third house look at the power in this third house in the third house he has venus jupiter in the sign of Libra. And I emphasize Libra because to have Venus in Libra is so powerful. And it's the ruler of the third and the third. And I might say it is also in the nakshatra Chitra. Chitra is the bright and shining one. It's the gem, it's the jewel. And they say many people in acting have this nakshatra strong. Not only that, notice that in this, in this nakshatra, Jupiter is very close to the fixed star spica, which is going to be about zero to one degree of Libra. And his Jupiter at two degrees of Libra is pretty close to that. Now, Spica is the most auspicious fixed star in the heavens. It deals with literary genius. It deals with the arts and creativity. And this is what he possessed. So the third house also deals with writing. You know, they made their music. They wrote their songs. This was creative genius. So Jupiter expands what it's next to. It's next to Venus in Libra. And let me say this too, I find more musicians have Venus in Libra. Libra is an air sign and what is music but the, the sound, vibration with the air. So it's creative in the sense. And Venus is artistic all by itself. To be in its own sign, particularly Libra, can definitely bring out musicians many times and in the third house you know this person has to be creative has to express themselves through song and music or performances this is totally strong here now if you look at the jupiter venus also adding up what we know about house rulers venus rules the 10th house and it's in the third house. The 10th house is our career. It's our social standing. It's fame. It's how we look to the world. But most of all, it's our purpose in career. And to have the ruler of the 10th in the third, in its own sign, accentuated by Jupiter, represents his career is as a performer. And extra extraordinary performer at that. So. Jupiter, by the fact that it rules the fifth house, which is the house of creativity as well. So the ruler of the fifth is in the third. When you have a connection between five and three, you're going to find people are in the arts of some, some sort, whether it's music, whether it's art, performing, any of the arts. Writing, even writing is a creative force. Of course, all of these creative uh, variables. Now, realize that Jupiter rules the fifth and Venus rules the tenth. This is a Raja Yoga, and that represents the Yoga of Kings. Raja means kingly. And so when you look at this Royal Yoga, it's, 
accentuating the third house. That is the house of performers, entertainers. I think I've made my point. But not only that, Jupiter rules the fifth. That is also the house of performers, entertainers, creative people. So whenever you have two planets come together and one rules an angular house, which the angles are one, four, seven, or 10, and Venus rules an angle because it rules the 10th, and the other planet that it's conjoined with rules a triconal house, which the triconal houses are one, five, and nine. This is what creates Raja Yoga. And Jupiter rules the fifth house. So the ruler of the 10th with the ruler of the fifth joined together creates Raja Yoga, which really doubly, quadruply, amazingly enhances the third house of performing, create, uh, writing, and entertaining. So going to the fifth house. The fifth house is also the house of creativity. And like I said before, the reason why it deals with creativity is because it's the third house from the third house. And the moon is there. And the moon being in Sagittarius relates back to Jupiter, which Jupiter is in Libra. But the moon in the fifth is another indicator of great capacity to create. Now the moon does rule the 12th house. Now this, this can deal with the fact that probably part of his genius had to deal with some of his suffering. Sometimes we write about these things. Sometimes this is what coerces us to be more creative. But his moon is in the nakshatra mula. And this nakshatra can be very self-destructive. And I have to say that Freddie Mercury, through a lot of his behaviors, was self-destructive. I mean, here is somebody that's so talented, so loved by the world, and he didn't even have that much happiness. You know, he became self-destructive with the moon being in Mula, but it's in the fifth house. Fifth house is this is where, where his mind, his consciousness was into creating. Now his moon in this chart is all by itself. It doesn't have planets on either side. So it is isolated and alone. So even though he had such great success and fame and fortune and wealth, he was devoid of peace of mind and happiness. And looking at the moon, there's no planet surrounding it, so it feels alone, except for K2, which makes it worse. K2 is in the 12th house from the moon. But there really isn't, except for Mars. Mars does aspect the moon. Mars aspects the moon by its fourth aspect, if you'll count from Mars. One, two, three, four, it fully aspects the moon. So it's not a chemodruma moon. Chemodruma means when the moon is isolated with no uh, full aspects to it. And that's a devastating moon where people feel completely alone. The mind is cracked. But he has Mars aspecting the moon. And that's powerful. But going to where Mars is, let me just say Mars is in his second house and the second house is wealth and money. With Mars being there, he spent a lot of money, but he made a lot of money. He made millions. I mean, these performers, when they're at the top of their game and sell this many, that popular, this many records and, and music, extraordinary, extraordinary wealth with Mars being in the second house. But Mars is conjunct Neptune. And many times a conjunction such as Neptune with Mars can be great delusions. And yes, <clears throat> in many respects, he had to be delusional with the, with the behavior and the things that he did. And plus, 
with Mars Neptune being in the second house, realize the second house will depict our early childhood, which could not have been easy. And he did not feel connected in, on some level with his parents, with his mother, with the moon being isolated. That's your relationship with your mother, with your sense of security. And Mars being with Neptune in the second house, there wasn't that strong a sense of security. And that also leads me to his fourth house, where he has K2. This means a lack of security, a lack of stability, that there, what, that there just wasn't solid ground when he was growing up. There was so much that had to do with change, disruption, probably moving with K2. They say K2 in the fourth house deals with the sense of feeling like a gypsy. You're never, you never feel at home anywhere. And many times people with K2 in the fourth move around a lot. So he's pretty much been all over the world. But K2 in the fourth really does detract from the connection with the mother. Wherever K2 is, remember you feel like something's always missing. And that goes to his home life, his family life, his mother. And probably he, he had these issues and problems of being gay and not wanting his family to know. This was not okay with a traditional family. So therefore there's the disconnection with the parents, the family, the mother. Saturn being in the 12th house. You know, this is, this is always feeling responsible and always putting yourself down for, for feeling guilty about things. And Saturn is with Pluto in Cancer. So this was a generation of difficulty. You know, this came, he came right after World War II. This was a difficult time in his generation to have Pluto in Cancer. But Rahu, when Rahu is in the 10th house, this leads to great success with career and notoriety and fame. So Rahu, not only that, is conjunct planet Uranus, the planet of the Great Awakener, the planet of unconventional, the unconventional, radical, rebellious one. And look at that. Wouldn't you say that he was pretty unconventional and radical and pretty rebellious all at the same time. And this really stood out in his performances, the way he dressed, the way he performed. It was out there, but that's what made him who he is. So unique, so unusual, so different and so talented. So one thing I wanted to add that's very, very interesting. I pulled up the day that, that he died, which was, I believe it was November 24th, 1991. So pulling up all the transits, which were fascinating to really look at what happened on that day you know, we always think of Jupiter as the great benefic and protector, but don't forget that Jupiter is freedom. And when somebody is suffering and there is no hope that they can recover or heal, when Jupiter aspects the sun, this can represent death because it is freedom from the suffering, from the chains of the body, the prison of the body that keeps you suffering. And on that day that Freddie Mercury passed away, which I'm sure was just a horrendous death uh, with the, the body disintegrating from the AIDS virus, transiting Jupiter 
was 18 degrees of Leo. Notice his son, 18 degrees of Leo. And how many times, there's so many times I have seen Jupiter brings death. Because what we don't understand is death is a beautiful experience. It gives freedom. And Jupiter was conjunct the sun. So he was rejoicing on that day when Jupiter hits the sun. You know, my teacher used to say, when you're born, you're crying and everyone else is rejoicing at the time of your birth. But when you die, you're rejoicing and everyone else is crying. So that's the interesting part of what we don't understand is that death is the ultimate experience and Jupiter conjunct the sun brings this freedom. So with that, I'd like to close. I thought you would find it very interesting to really study uh, and understand some of the deeper aspects of someone's, someone this famous and someone that's brought back into the limelight after their death. It's very interesting that this is the time that he's being brought back. And you will see that even transits during the time that someone that's been gone for a while comes back. You know, it could have a lot to do with the transit of Jupiter. Jupiter being in Scorpio, being on K2, reviving something from the past in his life. So with that, I'd like to close. I hope you've enjoyed this analysis. If you would like to learn more about Vedic Astrology, I have a university, which is universityofvedicastrology.com. Or if you would like a reading or learn more about me, you can always go to my website, which is galacticcenter.org. O-R-G. Thank you.